Okay, these are some fairly, again, very standard photosynthesis pracs. Um, I've set this one up just to show you, you should probably have done this at school, where your teacher set up a demonstration. What's in the bottom of this, fill, this funnel is uh, a pond weed, it's actually Kabumba, but you might have used Elodea. Uh, Elodea and Kabumba both produce oxygen bubbles from the cut end of their stem while they're photosynthesizing. And so this, oh, look at that big oh. oxygen bubble. So if you trap it all under a filter funnel, it collects all the oxygen that's being produced and bubbles of oxygen then appear up here. Your teacher may then have uh, potentially cheated a bit. I certainly did when I demonstrated this. Um, and left it for 24 hours, but put a bit of oxygen in so that it did the old uh, relighter, the relitter glowing splint trick. Um, now, obviously, this kabumba is not producing masses and masses of oxygen, and so you do have to leave this one for a good long while. And you, but you could put, you know, uh, some marks on to show how much oxygen it's produced. It would just take you ages and ages and ages. So we're going to put that one aside um, because obviously it would be much better if you could collect that gas in a measurable volume. Now this one, my syringe was full up. Uh, oh, that was a bit northern, wasn't it? Full up. Um, well, when I set this up about 10 minutes ago and already it's produced 0.1 of a millilitre one of a centimetre cubed of oxygen and you can see um, possibly I've got this, the cut end of the stem sticking up and there's, there goes an oxygen bubble so that would enable you to get a set of results in a, a reasonably short time although obviously the volumes you're collecting are very very small that uh, I'm just kind of using an upside down one mil syringe it's divided into a hundred, so each bit is giving you a hundred. You're getting quite an accurate measurement within a hundredth of a centimetre cubed. Um, that's probably the most accurate way of collecting oxygen. Um, however, one of the most beloved experiments of biologists is to uh, is to do the easy thing. And so this cylinder in here. Has got, well, I've actually got three cut stems in there because I wanted to make sure that at least one of them was working. Um, okay, so you can see there these oxygen bubbling out of those cut stems at a fairly constant rate, and that's what you're looking for, really. And in this experiment, you would sort of, you know, set your timer and count the number of bubbles released uh, in a unit time, like a minute or maybe two minutes. Uh, obviously there are quite a few evaluation points for this one because first of all you don't know what size the bubble is which is why the measuring the volume, tiny volumes, is much easier. Um, you can vary the light intensity simply by moving the lamp away. That rate of bubbling will then slow down. So I'm just going to move the lamp a sort of arbitrary distance away. Now obviously as I move it, the the bubbles will slow down but it will take them time to slow down so that period of time is called equilibration so you would leave them until your rate of bubbling has slowed down until a steady rate so now it's going much slower um, it's going at a fairly steady rate still I'm watching bubbles bursting on the top of the water and I can see that they're kind of coming off like this which is slower than it was before and you could count those again so you would be varying the light intensity for that and leaving it to equilibrate between readings. I'll just move it a bit closer again. So now you can see they're speeding up and they're coming off a little bit faster but again you'd have to leave it until it went to a steady rate. And for all of these of course it's not just light intensity that we could vary Again, I've got them in potassium hydrogen carbonate solution. You could vary the carbon dioxide concentration that they're getting by adjusting the molarity of the solution. You could be looking at the effect of wavelength by 
sticking a filter of known wavelength in between the light and the um, and the cylinder and of course for all of these this light is giving off heat these are actually cool lamps so they're not giving up as, as much as they potentially could um, but obviously the closer it is to the plant the warmer that solution is going to be and that could have an effect on the results it could speed up uh, the rate of bubbling at the higher light intensity so if you've got your lamp jammed up to it it's going to be warmer than it is if your lamp's kind of over here um, so that's an evaluation point and what you would do to improve that is put a heat screen of water to absorb the heat in between your measuring cylinder and your lamp um, but you, obviously the main thing is the, the volume of bubbles you could have loads of little ones so um, this one here is producing billions of little bubbles whereas the one over here is producing bigger bubbles um, but fewer of them so that's kind of the evaluation points for that and if we go back to this one now we can see that we've produced even more oxygen even though it's been nowhere near a lamp out of the way okay so that's it pretty straightforward practicals remember that they're only going to ask you about what you know so they might ask you in this practical you know give you some data why does the light have an effect why does the wavelength have an effect uh, what would you expect if what's an evaluation point they're asking you practical things and then they could be asking you well, well where is that oxygen coming from where you're describing the light uh, dependent reactions oh they're going like crazy that's so good uh... <laughs> I love this experiment. It works! Hooray!